This is a typical milling machine. Today we're going to talk about every knob and lever on the head, what it does, and how to use it. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. This is every knob and lever where we take a look at a machine and look at every knob and lever, talk about what it does and what it's for. This is a typical vertical milling machine. This particular one is made by Precision Matthews, but there are many manufacturers that make similar machines, all patterned after the Bridgeport vertical mill. Now we're gonna look at all of the controls on the head today, but if you're here for just one thing, this video does have chapter marks, so you can jump right to what you need. Of course, every machine shop video needs to start with a safety warning. This is a powerful machine, which makes it very useful, but it also means it can hurt you. So don't be an idiot. Let's start with the spindle powertrain. Of course, the whole point of a vertical milling machine is to spin a tool. And so it has a motor that runs through a series of belt and gear reductions down to the tool that's held in the spindle. Now, I just have a boring bar in here because it's easy for you to see on video this thing turning. The motor is controlled with a selector switch that has three positions, stop, forward, and reverse. And it does exactly what you would expect. Forward spins it forward, stop stops it, and reverse spins it in reverse for tools that need to run the opposite direction. Now in addition, there is also a brake lever up here, and they're in a little bit different position on different mills, but every mill like this is gonna have a brake lever. So if I'm running the mill forward and I want to change direction, on this mill I have to actually stop it. Some mills you can just toggle directly from forward to reverse. I've used a three-phase bridge port that you could do that, which is great for power tapping. On this machine, you actually have to use the brake to stop it. So if you're running forward, go to stop, pull the brake, go to reverse. Now the brake is also useful for immobilizing the tool for uh, putting a wrench on the drawbar for actually changing the tool. This spins freely, but if you pull and hold the handle, it holds it still, makes it easier to change the tool. Now the speed on this mill is controlled with a variable speed transmission. This is a variable width pulley belt drive, similar to the transmission in a snowmobile or a golf cart. And you change the speed by turning this crank and there's a little readout here on the front that tells you approximately what speed it's turning. Now you can only adjust this while the spindle is turning. So if we put this in forward, we can adjust this slower or faster. Now some machines have step pulleys where you actually have to change the belt. Some machines will have a variable frequency drive, but these crank ones are very common on variable speed mills. Now, because this is actually changing the belt ratio, you do get torque multiplication when you run slow. The VFD, if you run the machine slow, you don't get very much additional torque, if any. But on this kind of a machine, if you run it slow, you're getting torque multiplication in addition to the speed reduction. Now, if you need to run even slower, this machine runs down to about five or 600 RPM, maybe seven or 800 practically. If you need to run slower than that for a larger tool or if you need more torque, this mill is equipped with a back gear. Press this knob in, rotate it around to the rearward position. You might need to grab the spindle and twist it in order to get the gears to engage. That puts it into back gear and gives you additional reduction. So this can run down on this particular machine down to about 70 RPM. Now this gives you enormous amounts of torque, but the thing to remember is that when you have it in back gear, it changes the direction of spindle rotation. So if I switch this to forward, you can see that the spindle is actually turning backward. So if I wanna go forward in back gear, I have to select reverse. And this always bites somebody at some point. They put a big drill or an end mill in here and start milling and cannot figure out why it is not cutting properly. It's because they forgot and they're probably running the tool backwards and dulling it. Now the back gear selector lever also has a center position that it will lock into. And this is a neutral position. So the spindle is free to turn. This is really handy if you have like a dial indicator in here and you're trying to center up on a part. Uh, but keep in mind that when it is in neutral, the brake is gonna have no effect because the brake is connected to the powertrain above the gears for the back gear selector. 
Of course, now that we've got a spinning tool, we need a way to move it vertically. Now this is commonly used uh, while machining for things like drilling and boring, or it's just used to set to a particular height to take a cut. And you do that with the quill locked. So the quill is locked in position by this lever. And all this does is it has a couple of pieces of brass that are milled out to fit against the curved sides of the quill. The quill is running in a precision bore, and this just squeezes against it to lock it into position. When you are milling horizontally, you definitely want to have the quill locked. Now, this particular machine has what's called a speed handle on the quill. And what that means is that I can take this lever and this you know, moves the quill up and down when it's unlocked. But if I lock the quill in this position, I can also move the lever out and I can rotate this freely without moving the quill. So if I have a situation where I'm pulling down, I'm trying to drill right here, this is inconvenient. I can just unlock this, move it around, and now I have the quill in the position I want and I have the lever in a more convenient space. Now this is an add-on, this did not come with the mill. The mill came with a lever that just has a pin that you can sort of pop in and out. It's not super convenient, so I added this to the mill and these speed levers are available for pretty much every model of mill on the market. Now if you want to, for example, drill down to a specific depth and stop, this mill has what's called a micrometer depth, depth stop. There is a, a scale here and a little micrometer dial here where you can set a hard stop for the quill. So when it comes down, it hits that position. And so if you've got a quill DRO or if you're measuring and working uh, from touching off and then moving a particular distance, you can set up a stop. You can adjust this just by turning this little micrometer dial and then there's a lock ring you can screw up against it if you want it to stay in position for repeated operations. And that gives you the ability, like if you're drilling a bunch of holes and the need to go to a certain depth, you can set a stop so that you always go and stop at that same depth. Now this machine, like many in its class, is equipped with an automatic quill down feed that will allow you to configure the machine so that the quill feeds automatically into the workpiece as it's turning. You select how far you would like it to advance per revolution, and it will mechanically do that for you. Now this is useful for heavy drilling operations, and it's also useful and primarily, in fact, used for boring, where you have a single point tool and a boring head, and you wanna make a smooth advance down through a bore. Now, when this is engaged and you run the machine, the spindle or the quill advances automatically. So let's talk about how this works. So the first control is the engage and disengage for the quill feed. Normally this lever would be left in the disengaged forward position so that the entire gear train involved in the quill feed is disconnected from the spindle. If you're not using it, you really wanna leave it in this position so that you're not uh, incurring wear on the mechanism or accidentally getting it engaged when you didn't want it. But when you do wanna use the quill feed, you have to pull this knob and rotate this around to the rearward position. And again, this is a gear mesh, so you might have to grab the tool and rotate it to get the gears to align. So with that in the engage position, that sends power from the turning spindle to the gear train to drive the quill feed. Now to select how far it advances per revolution of the spindle, there is another gear selector over here on the side. And again, you just pull the knob, you may have to turn the tool to get the gears to mesh, and you can move this to one of three different positions to control how far the spindle, excuse me, how far the quill moves per revolution. And this one, there's a lot of gear reduction here, so you may have to make multiple revolutions of the tool in the spindle in order to get the gears to engage to change the down feed rate. Then to control the direction of the feed, whether you want the quill to feed downward or upward, there is a plunger here in the uh, crank handle here. So if you push it in, it will feed down, if you pull it out, it will feed up. So I will go ahead and push this in. So now we're configured 
We have the gears engaged. We're configured for a specific feed per revolution. We are configured for down feed. And the last thing we need to do after we unlock the quill, you wanna do this with the quill unlocked, is pull this lever out to engage. So if this is just running, nothing will happen because the action, the, the gear train is running through to the handle, but the um, quill is not actually advancing. To actually advance, you pull out this lever and it starts advancing. When you are done, hit that lever and it stops. And of course, to run the other direction, you would pull this plunger out. And of course, you would start from lower down. We go forward and now the quill is moving upward. And again, you just hit the lever to stop it. So if anything goes wrong, you just smack the lever. Now this machine does have an overload clutch. So if you actually run this physically into something that will stop it, the idea is that the clutch should disengage the feed. Don't do that. Yes, it's there to save you in the machine, but uh, you do not want to test safety features like that. Now, one thing to note is that all of this gearing is ultimately driving through to turn this crank handle, which you then engage to drive the quill. Well, if you disengage this mechanism by putting the plunger into the middle position, this crank is now free to turn and you can engage the down feed and you can actually fine feed the mill using the handle. In fact, you can have the power down feed disengaged. So none of the gear drive in here is working. Nothing is connected. You've got this in the neutral position and this gives you a way if you want to do a precision down feed, either while milling or just to set up the machine, you can engage this and then you can use the crank to finally adjust the position of the quill and lock it in position for a milling operation. Or you can actually use this for fine feed for drilling or for fine feed for boring if you want to control it manually instead of using the power feed. Now what may not be obvious is that the quill feed actually has an automatic stop feature as well. What you may have noticed is that this threaded rod that the micrometer stop runs on is actually free to move vertically. And the reason for that is because this is tied into a mechanism to automatically stop the quill feed. So when this goes down, there's a lever in the casting down here that this pushes down and it pushes up on this rod, which then disengages the quill feed. So if I have this engaged and I am running this manually or under power, as the stop comes down here and hits this rod, it will push it downward, which will push against this lever, which will automatically disengage the feed. So if I just feed down into it, it automatically releases this lever and releases the quill. And exactly the same thing will happen if I do that under power. Now, if you're feeding upward, there is also a stop at the top. If you look up underneath here, there is a tiny little button and you can see this little cylinder that moves up and down. And inside the casting, it's inserted through the hole under this screw cap, there's a tiny little barbell shaped lever so that when the stop comes up and actually hits this lever and forces it up, that then forces the screw down. And so you get the same effect. It hits the top, that lever forces the screw down, which through this lever causes this to, to trip. And so you can get the, exactly the same thing in the up direction, feeding upward, it'll hit that and it will pop it out. Now this takes a lot of force and there's a tremendous amount of force on that tiny little barbell in there. And it is very common for those to break. So you probably don't really want to trust this. It's not an adjustable stop in the upward position. You probably don't really even want to trust it in the downward position because the manufacturer does not make guarantees about the accuracy on this particular mill. Precision Matthews claims only uh, within a hundred thou, a tenth of an inch, which is uh, a pretty wide margin. So you really want to feed 
manually against the position if you have a, a fixed depth that you want to hit. But of course, you know, that also works if you are feeding under power as well. Though I personally would never trust that if your life depended on it. And if you do want to use it, definitely test it manually in neutral first to make sure that it really does function. And that is every knob and lever on the milling machine head. There are actually some clamp bolts and some worm screws that are used for tilting the head and tramming in the machine, but tramming a milling machine is a topic for another day. This video is a little bit of an experiment for me. If you like this format, let me know by giving it a thumbs up down below and leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked about it. Let me know what you didn't like about it. If you have ideas for topics for future videos, throw those down in the comments. I'd like to hear them and I'd like to hear what you think. Thank you for watching.